Tarkus is by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. was released on June 14th, 1971. It was produced by Greg Lake. And it is seven songs and 39 minutes long. It has a real colorful album cover done by somebody named William Neal. One of the better album covers that you'll ever see. And it tells the story of the epic title track, uh, which is Tarkus, part armadillo, part tank that battles his enemies. And even better than the album cover is the journey map on the inside of the of the album cover. I don't have it. Uh, I don't have my. Uh, by the way, I got. I have a remastered version, which comes in one of those little cardboard um, sleeves. It do, it doesn't come with the regular uh, jewel case and in the in the insert, which I miss. But if you go online, you can easily find the inside, which is like a journey map that shows all of the Tarkus's enemies and the Tarkus battling them. That kind of class, the mass, the manticore, the spider thing, and it's kind of cool. It's real cartoony. And uh, it, it, it just makes the songs more come to life. Uh, this album, it, it doesn't sound too much different from the debut album, which is the album with the, the white bird on it, the dove. But both feature, both of these albums, especially this one though, they feature Emerson's different organs and synths, Greg Lake's vocals, and Palmer's super drumming. And it's it's super proggy, uh, Tarkus is, until the at least the very last song. Um, and so with that, let's just get right into it. The, f- the first track on Tarkus is the title track, Tarkus. And it's 20 minutes and 43 seconds long. This is the most proggy thing ever, maybe that I've ever heard. It's, it's a 20-minute epic that tells the story of the Tarkus, the part creature tank armadillo. And it's divided into, I think, seven tracks. So the first track is Interruption. It's two minutes and 44 seconds. It was written by Emerson. This is the big, uh, it's the big introduction to the song. It's an instrumental. And right away, you're just introduced to all of his synths and organs. And uh, it it starts out in a chaotic 5-4 time signature. And it uh, switches back and forth to 3-4 time. And that's really what tells you that it's a prog. And of course, because it's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, it's not too guitar driven like everything the melody is totally driven by the the organs and the synthesizers uh, the second track is called stone uh, of years it's it's really not a track though it's part two of the first track tarkus stones of years is three minutes and 44 seconds long it's two it, so it runs from uh 243 to 627 and it's an emerson and lake uh written song and this is where the Tarkus fights with the, the spider-looking stegosaurus dinosaur-looking creature. <laughs> the verse, and this is, by the way, the, the very first verse of the song. Uh, Greg Lake sings, has, has the dawn ever seen your eyes? Have the days made you so unwise? Realize? And then it goes on. Okay, it's like, uh, this is where the tempo slows down and it... Um, and Greg Lake is singing in his best voice, basically. And uh, there's a bunch of verses in Stones of Years. The second part of the Stones of Years is the there's an instrumental break, which runs from 4 minutes and 1 second to 5 minutes and 39 seconds. And what it is really is a keyboard solo where Emerson... By the way, this is my favorite part of the song, is this uh, keyboard solo in Stones of Years. So it starts... It, it's great that you get it 4 minutes into the song, but it's the dot, dot, dot... Da, 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 da. <laughs> and uh and then it ends in a bah, 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 bah. it's just uh it, it's a good reward right away into a 20 minute song that you get into this really cool uh keyboard part and it, it, it you know it really gets my attention every time uh the the part, the stones of years part is verse 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 that solo and then two more verses so the i mean the verses I don't, want, I don't want to deconstruct what he's singing about because there's not really much to say other than he's singing about the Tarkus battling <laughs> the spider, okay? The spider stegosaurus dinosaur guy. Uh, the third part of Tarkus, by the way, that's the Tarkus. That's what he looks like. Um, I mean, you can really see the armadillo. Um, <laughs> anyway, the, uh, I, I, Iconoclast, that is the third part. It's a minute and 16 seconds, so it runs from 627 to 743. 
And Emerson uh, wrote this part. This is an extreme change in music, which has taken on a more violent tone and mood in Iconoclast. And that's because Tarkus is fighting with a pterodactyl with jet wings and missiles called Iconoclast. And if I could show you the picture, I would. Uh, but, I mean, it's not hard to find if you go if you go to the Wikipedia page or if you go to Genius. There's a really nice blow-up of the picture. But uh, you can see the Tarkus taking on the the pterodactyl with jet wings okay and it's an instrumental for a minute the fifth part the i'm sorry the fourth part of the song is called mass it's three minutes and 12 seconds and it runs from 743 to 1055 it is written by emerson and lake and this is the part of the song with a big rock riff on a, a lead guitar so this is greg lake on lead guitar there isn't really a lot of lead guitar in emerson lake and palmer period but this is one of the rare occasions where it takes the lead. Uh, the mass is the grasshopper legs machine. With uh, it lo- <laughs> If you look at the picture, it looks like glass windows in the front. I, I don't know how else to explain it. I'm not really sure what it is. But uh, the mass is a, is a more complex part of the song. Okay, The first part is a verse. And Greg Lake is singing... The preacher said a prayer, save every single hair on his head. He's dead. Da, 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 Okay. And then the refrain is the weaver in the web that he made. That's the refrain part of the song. And then there's a long instrumental break from 825 to 1022, which is a keyboard solo. The keyboard solo matches the main rock riff that da, 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 you know, it does that. Uh, which matches the verse line. But then at 8.50, at 8 minutes and 50 seconds in the song, it turns into like a more funky solo. Like the music really changes. And those are the four, uh, the three parts that make up Mass. Mass is a verse, refrain, verse, refrain, that solo, which is just under two minutes. And then another verse, refrain, verse, refrain. And that's Mass. The fifth part of the song is called Manticore. It's 1 minute and 52 seconds, and it runs from 1055 to 1247. This was written by Emerson. It's another instrumental, and this is the part where Tarkus... uh, Okay, the Manticore is a lion with a scorpion's tail and a human face. (laughs) I mean, I don't don't know how else to describe it, but... um, it, It looks like a lion with a human face. But a scorpion tail, like the, you know, the, t- the tail with the pointy thing on the end. Uh, well, anyway, this is a real fast instrumental. And the Tarkus is battling the Manticore. And it segues right into part six, Battlefield, which is three minutes and 51 seconds. It runs from 1247 to 1639. It was written by Greg Lake. This is my second favorite part of the song where it, it really stretches out as a big, heavy emotional um, feeling to the song. And uh, it has uh, verses and guitar solos. The verse is Greg Lake singing, clear the battlefield and let me see. It's like... (laughs) Okay, and then uh, all the profit from our victory. And he's singing about, you know, all these different battles that Tarkus has had. And uh, the battlefield goes verse, verse, uh, a big guitar solo from, I, I would assume it's Greg Lake. I'm, I'm pretty certain it is. And then uh, one final verse. And then the final part of Tarkus is part seven, which is Aquatarkus or Aquaticus. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to say it. Um, let's just say Aquatarkus because that's probably what it is, but. It's four minutes and four seconds, and it runs from 639, uh, 1639 until the end of the song, which is 2037. And this is written by Greg Emerson also. Uh, sorry, Keith Emerson. And this is the... Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> like... Ma, 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 ma. It's the la- and then the last 20 seconds of the song is the... Dun, 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 dun... And Aquarticus is, or Aquatarchus is when um, the Tarkus has lost the battle and 
he's like in the picture he's shown in like a body of water like a river and uh he's turning into a uh, aquatic being uh, and aquatarchus the final part which is part seven is all instrumental and uh it's a good it's a good ending to the song because it brings back some of the main themes from the opening section of the song uh eruption and stones of years and then it closes out um and it's the end of what is really just a great big epic tarkus now as great as tarkus is as a, a opener and you know if you got this on vinyl back in the 70s it was on the first side on the second side <laughs> not so great uh but let's just quickly walk through it track by track the second track is called jeremy bender it's a minute and 51 seconds it's very very short and it's written by emerson and lake and it opens with a piano line and then um the verse is greg lake singing jeremy bender was a man of leisure took his pleasure in the evening sun laid him down in a bed of roses finally decided to become a nun i i don't i don't want to parse too much through the lyrics but it sounds like um it sounds like he tried to get into the convent to, you know, um, do some unsavory things. But uh, that's pretty much the song. It's a it's verse, 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 and it tell it talk. You know, the, Greg Lake is singing about the follies of <laughs> Jeremy Bender. I mean, the the last name is Bender, so just you don't have to imagine too much to realize what the song is about. Okay. Track three is Bitches Crystal. It's three minutes and 58 seconds. This is also written by Emerson and Lake. The defining characteristics of this song are the, the horn that goes mur, 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 after every line in the verse, and then the lead piano part, which is really strong, and the proggy solo in the middle. The verse is Greg Lake singing, Bitches Crystal knows you twist all the lines. Okay, and then the chorus is part is the second part of the song. Tortured spirits cry, fear is in their eyes, ghostly images die. And then the third part of the song is the bridge. And he's, Greg Lake sings, Evil learning, people burning, savage casting, no one lasting, witchcraft, sadness, madness, turning their minds. Uh, and then there's a piano solo, which runs from 3 minutes and 2 seconds to 3 minutes and 13 seconds. I guess this is one of the better songs on the second half. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's it's complex structure. It goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, the piano solo, the bridge, another piano solo, uh, bridge, and then a verse and chorus, and that's Bitch's Crystal. Track four is The Only Way, which is a hymn. Uh, it's three minutes and 49 seconds on Tarkus, and it's also written by Emerson and Lake. These are themes used, uh, taken for the intro and the bridge from something called Takada in F and Prelude 6, composed by my guy Bach, Johann Sebastian. Uh, maybe, I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll go find the link to this song and uh, I'll let you guys listen to it and do a comparison. But the deal with this song is Greg Lake is singing these anti-religion lyrics and um, on Tarkas. While Emerson, he's playing a church organ. And so there's like a conflict between the music that you're hearing, which is real church organ heavy, and the messaging and the lyrics, which is anti-religion. There's three parts to this song. The organ solo at the beginning. The verse, Greg Lake is singing, People are stirred, moved by the word, kneel at the shrine, deceived by the wine. It's about 16 bars. And then the bridge is, can you believe God makes you breathe? Why did he lose six million Jews? You know, I, I mean, you're questioning the validity of God. That's what the song is about. Uh, the song structure is an organ solo, the verse, the bridge, and then verse, verse. And that's the only way him. The song perfectly segues to track five, which is called Infinite Space. It's the conclusion to The Only Way. It's three minutes and 20 seconds, and it's written by Emerson and uh, Carl Palmer. 
instru- it's an instrumental. The the song seems to be switching from three four time to four four time every measure. So like one two three one two three four one two three one two three four like that. And uh, Emerson is pounding away on the piano. That's pretty much what Infinite Space is. I don't think there's much more to say about it than that. It is it's a good ending to the only way. Track six on Tarkus is a time and a place. It's three minutes and two seconds. It's a Emerson and a Lake written song. There's three parts of the song. There's the verse, the bridge, and the organ solo. The verse is there's a, there's a place, a time, and a space. No one can trace that. No one can trace. I bet I. Um, you know, when Greg Lake was in King Crimson, he's not writing the lyrics uh, that Pete Sinfield is. But, but you know, his... Greg Lake's, he's really good at rhyming. He, he, he's not a bad lyricist. And he's, I mean, he's one of my favorite singers. He's definitely... He's number two or number three for me. Um, I don't know if I've, t- I've... I should do a video, but I would have uh, Lane Staley one, Greg Lake... John Wetton, two and three, and then probably Getty Lee. But uh, I you know I li- I do like Greg Lake's lyrics. I don't I try not to like sit there and fawn over them, like parse all the words and what does it mean and all that. But um, he he is good and he's a great singer. I mean he's one of the best. The bridges save me from this shallow land, take me out of temper's hand, and uh, and then there's the organ solo. That's pretty much the song. It's a verse, 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 uh, bridge the organ solo, and then the bridge again, and then another verse. And that's time and a place. And then, uh, finally, the last track on Are You, on uh, Tarkus is Are You Ready, Eddie, which is track seven, and it's two minutes and ten seconds. This is a track written by Palmer, Emerson, and Lake. It's it, What it is, it's a 12-bar uh, rock song. It's a rock and roll song. It's not a prog song. Everything else on this album, super proggy. Are you ready, Eddie? This is not, this is like a joking around goof off song, which was written for ELP engineer and yes, engineer and co-producer Eddie Oford, who is a, a pretty much a legend. But I mean, they're just goofing off here. The the verse, like I said, they're 12 bars. Are you ready, Eddie, to turn your faders down? I mean, he's basically singing about Eddie recording a song. <laughs> There's not much else to say about it. It's another vehicle for um, for Emerson to show off on the piano. And uh, this is Tarkus. That's the album Tarkus. Uh, Are You Ready, Eddie? Ends with its uh, five verses. That's the whole song. And then, you know, some slick organ playing. Or uh, piano. I guess it's piano or organ. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, in summary, Tarkus. Uh, you know, it sold really good. It's its sales are five hundred and ten thousand. That's good for eighth overall for ELP. Which you know I got a comment on after the first ELP review. You know they are they're big prog sellers. They are. I mean prog rock is not gonna sell huge like the Beatles or Metallica or Whitney or Shania Twain. But I mean five hundred thousand is gold. I mean that's awesome. Uh, Progarchives.com. Gives this record a 4.07, which, uh, I sh- you know, I should check real quick. Is that their highest? Okay, that was a quick pause to look it up, but I'm, I'm shocked to learn that Tarkus, of their first four ELP studio records, is the lowest rating. Um, I want to guess that. I would I would have put it at first or second. Uh I guess I got to think about that for a while. Uh, it is rated higher than uh, pictures at an exhibition, which uh, technically is a live album, but it's uh, it's all new. It's new content, so I would consider it like a studio. They they went into the studio and fixed it up. But, uh. Anyway, uh, progarchives.com gives Tarkus a four point oh seven, which is uh, fair. It's a four-star album. Uh, allmusic.com gives it three and a half stars. I, you know, I, I think it's better than three and a half stars. 
Uh, and Rolling Stone I never found. And uh, by the way, I'm still looking for a book. I don't know why, but, uh, you know. I, I want a Rolling Stone album guide. Uh, preferably one from the 80s or earlier. Um, you know, I don't want I don't want the new one that's woke. That's, you know, you know. <laughs> You know, that has Bob Fripp way down the list of top guitarists. And um, uh, who, who, is the, who is ranked ahead of him? I can't remember now. It's, it's preposterous, but maybe I'll do a video on that um, where Bob Fripp ranks on the top 50 guitarists of all time by Rolling Stone. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's... That'll, that'll conclude Targus. Good album. Uh, you know, I think it's a four-star album for sure. Uh, next up on the channel will uh, be Yes, Fragile, and then Pictures at an Exhibition. You know, I know it took me a while to get Targus out. I've been, I've been listening to it a lot, and I've just been bogged down at work. And you can tell now I'm not, at, I'm not in my normal home, um, my home office. I'm, I'm on the road, so... Uh, that, you know, I, I just wanted to get this done and posted and I'm happy to do so no matter where I am. So I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for listening. And if you haven't, if you like my videos, like, and subscribe, you know, if you don't, or if you want to leave a comment, maybe you don't like my ELP reviews or you don't like, I did every Rush album and, you know, I'm working my way through a bunch of the prog giants. So that's, that's what the channel is right now. And, uh, just my favorite bands, my favorite rock bands, prog bands, heavy metal. And, uh, I can't wait to do some porcupine tree reviews. <laughs> All right. That's, that's enough. I'm just, I'm, I've gone way off script, so I'm out. Thanks everybody.